And as a provider, we need to know what tools are out there because when a patient comes up to us and says, oh, I looked this up on ChatGPT and it told me this, and if you've never heard of it, then you're going to lose a little bit of credibility with your patients. Welcome to the Prospective Doctor Podcast, brought to you by Med School Coach. Pre-med and medical students alike are encouraged to tune in each week for tips on how to become a strong med school candidate, gain acceptance into the school of your dreams, and succeed on your journey toward residency and becoming a doctor. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Perspective Doctor in 2023. This is the first episode of the year, and I'm excited that you guys are joining us. And we have a special guest today, Dr. Harvey Castro. And I'm just going to give him a little opportunity to just tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey to medicine. Hi. My name is Dr. Harvey Castro. I'm an ER board certified ER physician. Basically, I've taken the non-traditional path in that everything I've done in medicine is not traditional. <laughs> Let me preface by saying I've started over 20 different companies, ranging from vitamin companies uh, to mobile apps. I've had over 20, uh, actually now 30 apps in the App Store. And I've also started my own healthcare system um, that I recently sold last year. That's amazing. I'm sure we're going to get into a lot of that because, like I just said, it's a new year. We're in this digital age. So you're just the person for us to chat with about all of the different things happening with technology and healthcare, because it's definitely evolving. And I know probably when we were in school, I'm not going to like date myself, <laughs> but I, I've been in school a while ago for the listeners out there. You guys know, um, it's a totally different age. Like I know we had cell phones and things, but like, we weren't able to like use our phones during rounds and things like that. So things have definitely changed. And now technology is ingrained in everything we do, including healthcare. So there was a new technology that came out, which isn't really new, but the way that it's being used has been revolutionary. So everyone is chatting about AI and chat GPT. So you wrote a book entitled Chat and GPT Healthcare, The Key to the New Future of Medicine. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So I've always been into technology, probably too much. Uh, I know my wife wants to kill me because I'm always wanting to buy the latest gadget, the latest <laughs> iPhone. And even when I have had the iPhone for a month, I'm, re I'm ready for the next one to come out. And so with that said, when I read about Chat GPT and saw how it was doing all these different things, I thought, wow, what if we uh, use this technology in medicine? And basically, it's for those people that have never heard of ChatGPT, a simple analogy would be, imagine going onto a website, typing in, let's put it in medical terms, typing in a case scenario of a patient that you saw and asking for the diagnosis. And believe it or not, the technology behind it, it has a high accuracy that it will guess the right diagnosis. Other things that I've been using it for are these long journal articles. I've been um, basically copying it, pasting it into ChatGPT and asking it to give me a quick summary. And so this technology, it just blew me away to the point where I thought, you know, I need to share this with others, especially other healthcare providers, because the way I see it, if we know about the technology and obviously we know medicine, then now our creativity part of ours, uh, us out there can create a new product or can add to a new product. Obviously, this is forward thinking in the sense that, you know, this, this technology hasn't been approved by the FDA, hasn't been tested. Is this technically a medical device uh, from the ethics and legal? There's all these questions. But with that said, I truly believe that our patients are going to be using this technology. And just like uh, back in the day when people were using MD Consult and Googling their diagnosis, this is the next thing that's going to be out there. And as a provider, we need to know what tools are out there because when a patient comes up to us and says, oh, I looked this up on ChatGPT and it told me this. And if you've never heard of it, then you're going to lose a little bit of credibility with your patients. I couldn't agree more. Like there are so many things out there and so many tools there to help aid not only us, but patients in terms, like you said, of we always say we don't want to listen to Dr. Google. Now it's like we don't want to listen to Chat GPT. But <laughs> there there are so many tools out there that are helping, like multiple companies like you've been involved with and other people. There's 
things out there called machine learning and AI, which can help with different diagnoses, which would need the help of a human, of course, right now in these days to help verify and solidify things because we're, we're not telling you students to go out there and use this to write your HPI or something, but it can be something where you can kind of check and, and learn and, and grow and, and try to figure out how to utilize it to expand your resources. Like when we use things like Dynamed or up to date, this might in the future become the next level of that. Yeah. And see, that's the fun part of writing the book. Um, the hard part is writing it and trying to keep within a certain voice in the sense that I'm writing, but I'm trying to keep it basic because some people that are not medical don't know what clinical trials are or certain parts of medicine that you and I take for granted. Yet some of the advanced people that are ahead of the curve when it comes to technology and terms, writing a book that they look at, they're like, well, this is kind of basic. I, I don't even want to waste my time. So it became a challenge for me to write it because I wanted to convey the information for everyone. But my end goal was, can I improve healthcare? And can I introduce this topic to healthcare professionals out there to use this technology? And so my go first go around may not be the best book out there, but I think it for the goal of uh, communicating with people and, and using this technology, I think it'll meet that goal. And then for the second edition, I'm already working on it. So that way, because I already know that the next generation of this technology is already coming out more than likely mm -hmm. this year. And so when it comes out, I want to make sure that I have another edition ready to go. Absolutely. I think that you said a lot of important things, like you're kind of opening the door for more research on these types of things and how it can be utilized for good in the future. And as you mentioned, you have been involved in a lot of thought forward organizations. Um, for the students out there who may not be aware of this realm of healthcare tech, and, and as you mentioned, you are a clinical doctor, me as well, and I'm also involved in like telehealth and things like that. There's so much out there. So sometimes when, when students come and they think that, okay, for the next 30 years, all I can do is go to a patient office or go to the emergency room and, and see patients day in and day out. We definitely need that. And we definitely encourage you to, to find your passions. But I think that it's good to explore and realize that a lot of your skills are transferable. So do you have any ways to suggest how students can work in innovation in healthcare or get involved? Yeah, so you said a lot <laughs> and <laughs> you said a lot and all really good information to unpack. You know, I'm gonna start with just having that entrepreneurship mindset. That doesn't mean you have to go out there and invent something. Just being open to just change. I think that's the number one asset that you can have as a student, as a professional, as a retired professional, because I have managed over hundreds of ER physicians. And the, unfortunately, the ones that were really resistant to change, the ones that didn't want to type in uh, their medical notes, that wanted a, uh, someone to transcribe for them, or someone they wanted to go to paper, they didn't want us to use computers, were the ones that were unfortunately dating themselves. And so I tell you guys to always keep up. I know it's kind of hard and I know medicine is a lifelong experience. You have to keep learning, learning, learning. In fact, the other day I read that every 72 days, our medical knowledge doubles. Mm -hmm. So that's just crazy to me because that means so much information that we're expected to know. And so with the question that you asked, one of the things that I personally did is I created a LinkedIn group called ChatGPT Healthcare. And my goal there is to unite scientists, non-clinicians, uh, clinicians, and all post different topics on this technology. That way we can all learn the legal aspect, the medical aspect, um, because the way I see it is the more we all discuss as a community, the more we can evolve and create better products. I have no personal gain. I'm not starting a company on the side or doing anything with this. I'm sincerely just doing this to promote the greater good for our patients. And so to keep up with things that are going, you know, some simple things that I've done is I've created a Google alert and I put in key terms that I, key industries that I want to keep up with. And literally you can get an email either instantaneously or once a day or once a week. And Google will keep up with those topics, which is kind of nice. 
The other thing I've done is I encourage every single one of you guys to create your own LinkedIn account and start beginning to network. The more and more you uh, know your network, the more and more things become available in the sense that, for example, you mentioned you're in telemedicine, but you may connect with someone that is in AI, I'm making something up, that is out in Europe, and you might be a person that maybe would work with that physician or that healthcare system. And so open your eyes and keep networking would be my advice. I love those key points. And you brought up a lot of them because, yes, we do have to stay on top of our information because it's evolving every day. And we're in a digital age right now. We're not like our uh, probably currently retiring attendings. It's phenomenal how much things they had to know by just like knowing all the books because there were no computers or internet. But now it's a digital age with more information, there's more responsibility. So we have to stay on top of it. And, and not only with keeping up with the hot topics in medicine and innovation and things like that, but it may be good to create a Google alert for you students out there who may be studying a specific section in your preclinical years or in your clinical years when you're on a certain rotation. So you can have things to talk about when you're on rounds. Um, and then for those who may be ready for residency or already in residency, starting to have alerts for those in your specialty it is a great thing to do. And then I also love what you mentioned about networking and LinkedIn. I am a LinkedIn-aholic and I'm not shy about it. It's my favorite form of social media because there are so many people on there that you can connect with and not only just to, to gain jobs and things like that, which most people, especially in your stage, are in the traditional way in medicine where you have to apply for the match and things like that. But as you grow and you develop, or if you want to work in innovation and other things, there are so many people online willing to collaborate or even just discuss things with you. So everyone should have a LinkedIn page, long story short. Yeah. You know, you brought up an interesting point or gave me a, reminded me of something to tell the viewers mm -hmm. or the listeners out there. Consider getting on ChatGPT, and let's just pretend you're studying some subject in medicine right now. Tell GPT to create note mm -hmm. cards on, or flashcards on whatever that topic is. Maybe take a, a chapter or maybe a couple of pages of something or a table that you're having trouble memorizing. Paste it on there and say, please create me a, uh, some flashcards on this page. And then it'll create flashcards and you can print them. Um, other things, I remember mnemonics were big for me. And so ask for ChatGPT if you're struggling with topic X or Y to either explain it to you. And here's another thing. You can tell it, explain it to me in a fifth grade level. <laughs> and it will do it exactly mm -hmm. like a fifth grader. And those are just other ways. I, I believe I love learning. <laughs> and I personally look at things. And if I'm having a hard time, then I either listen to it, I read it, I try to memorize it. There's, there's different techniques. And I literally just, what I'm saying is add this as a different technique to help you learn. I love that. And now we're coming to a close of our conversation, which was amazing. And I can't wait to have you back when you have your second edition out or something else. But as you leave, I want to ask you what's one piece of advice you would have for someone who's just starting out in their medical career? You know, that's a really tough one. My main thing is you got to think outside the box. You got to be different. You're already at the top 1% because you look to your right and left and they're also medical students. They're already at the top. So somehow you have to stand apart. And some of that may be your history, what you've been through, uh, the grit that you have. But in the future, always try your best to think outside the box. Try to always stay outside the line because those are the things that are going to make you stand out in a good way. That's awesome advice. I thank you so much for joining us and sharing your words of wisdom. I just want to give you an opportunity to say goodbye and tell us how to join the LinkedIn group and how to reach out to you as well as where to buy the book. Awesome. Well, all you have to do is go on Amazon and type in Harvey Castro, MD. And I have had several books on there. One's called uh, ChatGPT Healthcare, and the other one is Success Reinvention. If you want to get a hold of me personally, just jump on LinkedIn. And I'm pretty good about responding to anyone that asks any questions. So jump up on there. And uh, my social media is all the same. It's Harvey Castro MD. And I'm also on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. But LinkedIn is mainly where I'm at. Awesome. For all of the listeners out there, thanks for listening. Click the subscribe button. 
Now, just so you know, because we haven't been doing a lot of videos, we're going to be having videos. So you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe there at Med School Coach. And you can also reach out to me on Instagram at Dr. D O C T O R, the letter D G R A M, Dr. D Graham. Let me know about any people you want to interview or hear from or any topics, um, as well as reaching out on our Med School Coach Instagram as well. We will see you again next week with a new guest. Bye. Each episode of the Perspective Doctor podcast is brought to you by Med School Coach. To access articles, videos, webinars, and free tools to help you succeed on your journey toward medical school and beyond, visit our website, perspectivedoctor.com. We hope you tune in again next time.